the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Call the roll. Councilmember Irby? Here. Councilmember Page? Here. Councilmember Wassinger? Here. Councilmember Gray? Present. Councilmember Dolan? Here. Councilmember Trakis? Present. Councilmember Harder? Here. Mr. Chair, we have a quorum. I move for approval of the journal of the meeting of August 29th, 2017. Second. And August 30th, 2017. Third one? Wrong one? We had a note on there that the journals have not. Due to the length oh. of the meetings, the journals haven't been finalized yet. Okay. So we'll have to move on. Sorry. Sorry. The journals of these meetings have not yet been finalized. So we'll move to bid openings. We have no bid openings, so we'll move to communications. Mr. Chair, there are no tax compromises, zoning matters, or road bridge matters this evening, so we'll move to communications. To other communications. Under other communications, item number one. The C file and county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation, and that will be the order. Item number two, third district. Same motion. So ordered. Item number three, fifth district. <coughs> Same motion, please. So ordered. Item number four. Uh, receive and file, and that will be the order. Item number five. Receive file, and the county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation, and that will be the order. Item number six. Receive file, and the county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation, and that will be the order. Item number seven. Uh, receive and file, and that will be the order. Item number eight, seventh district. Receive file, and the county councilor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. <coughs> Item number nine, first, second, third, fourth, and fifth districts. Receive file, and the county council be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number ten, fifth district. Same motion, please. So ordered. Item number 11, 5th District. Uh, again, same motion, please. So ordered. Item number 12, 5th District. And yes, again, the same motion, please. So ordered. Item number 13, 6th District. C file and county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation, please. So ordered. Item number 14, 6th District. Receive and file and hold on the order of business, please. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I'm also going to seek a hearing on this matter. So ordered. Uh, please read the add-ons. Yes, sir. Under the add-ons, item number one, second district. Uh, receive, file, and county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. My goal with this bill is to uh, make sure that the, um, in the event that a um, conversion is required at the ICE complex that's proposed in Creekport Park, that the um, developers pay for that land purchase for replacement land. And my intent with this legislation is also to prevent uh, the county um, or any county funds being used uh, or expended to purchase <coughs> replacement land for the ICE complex. And in addition to require the land be re uh, returned to open space use and uh, allow for a recovery of vegetation <coughs> as soon as possible. Item number two, six district. Receive file and the county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation, please. So ordered. Item number three, first district. Mm -hmm. I'm lost. Add on. Add on. Okay, add on. Add on. I only saw one page. Oh, okay. Me too. Receive file and the county council be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Oh. <laughs> uh, report to the county executive. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This evening, I, I have some thoughts to share regarding news reports um, regarding our county auditor, Mark Tucker. The position of county auditor is one of the most critical in our government. 
as the designated watchdog on behalf of taxpayers, the individual entrusted with the auditor's job helps ensure the county's fiscal responsibility. The auditor needs to demonstrate integrity and should be held to the highest personal and professional standards. However, to my dismay, and I believe the county's embarrassment, a news investigation has revealed that Mark Tucker, our auditor, has failed to uphold these standards. A reporter has obtained public court documents showing that Mr. Tucker, who was appointed in March to replace outgoing county auditor David McCarowitz, faces a federal tax lien in the amount of $91,496. And this tax lien has been in place since 2011. A delinquent tax debt of this magnitude demonstrates Mr. Tucker's lack of personal fiscal responsibility, compounded by his failure to disclose this vital information to the St. Louis County Council. That the public documents related to the tax lien are readily available through the most cursory of background checks also illustrates a failure by Councilman Page to vet Mr. Tucker before recommending him to the council for this key position. In the past, the position of county auditor was filled by someone with at least five years of accounting experience, as is required by the county charter, which is the law of the land with respect to this issue. Tucker, however, has no accounting experience whatsoever. Furthermore, the St. Louis County Prosecuting Attorney is investigating whether Tucker meets the requirements of the county charter to hold the position. As leader of the executive branch, I welcome audits of county government. Audits serve as guides to improving operations, cutting waste, and strengthening fiscal safeguards. Before Tucker's tenure, in a typical year, the county auditor would complete about eight audits in addition to filing numerous other special reports. <clears throat> On June 27th, County Councilman Mark Harder asked Mr. Tucker for a list of audits he had completed in the six months he has worked for St. Louis County. This request revealed that Tucker has failed to complete a single audit. None have been forwarded to the executive branch or posted on the county website, as they have been for some time. The news investigation also showed that Tucker had many unexplained absences from work and frequently showed up late to his job. We call upon our residents to pay their taxes. It is appalling that our own county auditor, an individual responsible for budgetary checks and balances, and who should serve as an example of fiscal responsibility, has instead proven derelict in his personal and professional obligations. In addition, in light of the sensitive nature and the large sums of money involved in the county auditor's work, the tax lien against Tucker, nearly $100,000, also leaves him open to being compromised. Taxpayers demand and deserve a competent and high-principled county auditor. And Tucker, unfortunately, they have neither. He cannot responsibly oversee his own finances. How can he be trusted to oversee the counties? I call upon Councilman Page and his fellow council members to terminate Mark Tucker's appointment and to replace him with an experienced and upstanding county auditor on whom the public and our county government can depend. I appreciate your attention to this matter. I have nothing further. Thank you. Um, I will respond uh, briefly. I am uh, disappointed to see such unprecedented deep personal attacks launched on our county auditor by County Executive Stinger. Um, this is not good government. Um, unfortunately, several years ago, uh, the county auditor went through a divorce and liquidated his 401k retirement fund <coughs> to take care of his family. That comes with tax consequences. He negotiated a um, payment plan with the IRS, and he's been current for the past six years. And the presence of this payment plan did not preclude him from um, fiscal oversight budget and audit duties for the state Senate and for the governor. It doesn't prevent him from working for the county. The county auditor receives direction from the county council and has been working on the plan that was been given to him. That includes meetings outside the office, hiring audit staff, working on the request for proposal for the outside financial audit, 
and reorganize an office that was in disarray. He has not been asked to do audits in the first six months of his office, and the county executive does not give the auditor duties. The previous auditor, who the county executive held in high regard, was released by a unanimous vote um, by the county council. Not because he was doing a great job, as he would like to lead us to believe. But it's time to move forward. I'm calling on the county executive to release the hold that's been placed on hiring additional audit staff and to stop the harassment and the attempts to undermine county audit function. I don't know if all of these stories about contracts and campaign contributions are true or false, but we need a strong, independent auditor uh, free of personal attacks as an important check on county government. Uh, the county auditor will continue to report his progress to the county council on our, our goals for the county auditor that conforms to local government best practices. And we will continue to monitor his progress. Thank you. Yes. First of all, I'm appalled that the county executive public, publicly put this gentleman's personal business out to the media in the manner in which he did before he even brought it to the council. Owing taxes does not prevent one from working for the state or the county. You went to the news media with confidential personnel information. <clears throat> The auditor has duties outside of the office at various times. It is not totally a desk job. Doing what, he's doing what he has been asked to do. We hired the county auditor. He answers to the council. He is working under difficult cir circumstances, which I'm sure you know. The auditor's office was in total disarray when Mr. Tucker started. His computer was hacked for several weeks, as was Councilwoman Gray's computer when she disagreed with you regarding Jamestown Mall. <coughs> the support staff who was there when he started refused to cooperate with him, left, and suddenly pertinent information was missing. And by the way, the staff person was given a patronage position. He's doing the job he was assigned to do. When he asks questions that ruffles the feathers, he's attacked. My suggestion is that maybe the county executive should spend time managing his, his office. It's a revolving door. How many of the county executive staff has been subjected to background checks? You apparently have hiring issues and retaining staff, particularly African Americans. Where is the top to bottom forensic audit that was promised? Where is the diversity study? Where is the diversity office? All of this has made me really think about the relationship of the council and the county executive. Why is the county executive even here on the dais with the council? You don't respect the council and you can't vote. As I see it, you are here as our guest, and obviously your behavior indicates that you don't know how to act and you have no respect for the council or the citizens you represent. When you disrespect citizens like the time you went off, completely off, on an elderly lady from the Metropolitan Churches United, it reflects negative, negatively on all of us. People assume that, they, that you are speaking for all of us on our behalf, and that is not the case. So why are you here? We need to rethink our charter so that we can conduct the business of the council with respect to everyone, including the fellow council members as well as the citizens. This letter that was presented, I didn't even read past the first line because when I saw the position of the St. Louis County Auditor is one of most critical in our government, the county executive position is the critical point in our government. Everything you accused him of in this letter about embarrassing the county, your name could be inserted 
throughout this letter. The foolishness that we have dealt with in the last three years is ridiculous and it needs to stop. Any other council members prepared to <clears throat> comment? Otherwise, we'll move forward. I'd, I'd like to make a comment. Just um, as far as the hiring of our current auditor, when we went through the process, there was a candidate that was qualified with the credentials and experience to be the auditor, and that's who I voted for because it was the only <coughs> candidate that had the actual qualifications, <coughs> as I understood them, to be the county auditor. I was not voting against the person who was selected, but I voted for the person who was qualified, and I would hope that we could come to an, a, some reasonable solution and find out if we can hire an auditor who is actually an auditor, uh, who has the credentials to be the auditor for St. Louis County, no matter who they're associated with, or hopefully with nobody. Uh, it's somebody totally outside, and then we can move forward and do what's proper for our citizens that we represent and give them somebody not connected to anybody and, and uh, that can be an auditor. <coughs> and I don't believe the auditor we hired was qualified. So I, I do think he should be replaced with in the in a, for a correct process and uh, let's do what we should do let's do what's right for everybody here and all right i think <laughs> you have an opportunity to respond as well, well I, I, have a, I, I would like to say uh, something. your report's done but you can interrupt and step on folks but you've had your report. I, i'm asking if i could respond are no, you denying I'm, me the opportunity yes, to I respond am. until okay. all That's the fine. council members have spoken here Okay. Yes, I would like to say I didn't say anything last week. I'm fairly new. I was very shocked and appalled at the uh, county executive's report last week. Um, and also some of the letters he has written that attempt to discredit certain council members, and sometimes <coughs> including myself. If a council member says he didn't have the information that he needed at the time he voted, then that's what he meant. You can't, if you, and you need to accept that. Because you disagree, does, with that assertion doesn't give you the right to attack someone, to disrespect them, or to try to insult their intelligence. Being in the legislature, we've got, as before I was a legislator, we would get bills and we would vote on them for perfection like we do here. And then we have to told, um, agree and finally pass those bills. Many, many times we change our minds because we did not have all the information. Even from year to year, we may get a bill one year, and the bill has to come back because it would. There were errors. So to say that you should know or you should have everything or you should understand the legislation uh, is ludicrous. <coughs> the average person cannot read a bill and completely understand it. That's why we have attorneys. That's why you hire, hire lawyers. If everybody could read the law, then we wouldn't need them. We could just go to court on our own because we would read the law and understand it completely. <coughs> But regardless of any of that, regardless of what happened, no one, no one has the right to disrespect someone, especially in this setting. I think that it would be better if you would start to speak with people privately and not keep having these public attacks. It has been, um, you sent out robocalls on council members, negative robocalls, packed full of lies and innuendos, and you've publicly made statements in the news media when most of us have not done that. Again, I find that the county executive would so choose to come out here and make these statements and put them in the paper and not come to us. That type of leadership is not productive and it's just a political stance. We're accused when we want to you know, discuss the ice rink or such, uh, other um, the Oh, there were other things we discussed, and people said, well, you're being political, you're being political. Oh, the prosecuting attorney's pension. We're not being political. We're being responsible to our constituents. But going out in public, making public statements, that's being political in my estimation. And with regards to the um, auditor's position, again, <coughs> as Councilwoman um, Irby said, those things should have been brought to our attention if that's how you felt, and maybe possibly 
we could have some type of discussion. But when you keep doing things this way, it's hard to have a conversation. You can't, nobody's listening to the other person because we're being attacked, we feel. And those last two statements that you made were totally out of line. I just want to say last week and today were totally out of line. And again, it's counterproductive. And I'd like an opportunity to respond. Does anybody else, the other council members, want to speak? I don't think the back and forth dialogue is productive, uh, Steve, but if you want to go yep. on. I would like to respond to some of the statements that have been made. I understand that we will have disagreements from time to time on the dais. I understand the need to have hearings and to have further information brought to the public's attention. In this particular matter, the things that you have raised do not change the facts of this situation. And the facts of the situation demonstrate that according to the federal tax lien that's on file on the fourth floor of this building, the county auditor has unpaid taxes, federal taxes, from 2008, 2009, 2010, related to his 1040. It's clear on the face of those liens. Whether we agree or we disagree about his original hiring, these are the facts as they are. This is not a personal attack on the auditor. This is a mere recitation of the facts that were brought to me and to my attention, not by the council, not by the four who voted for him, but by the news media. So that's the situation. Everything you've said, whether you disagree with me, you have been with other individuals throughout elections that we've had, it doesn't matter. All politics aside, this is our county government. This is a position of high regard in county government. No, you cannot insert my name in the letter. I don't have a $100,000 federal tax lien. This is not about me. This is about the auditor, and it's about the four council members who chose to vote for him to be the county auditor. That is what this is about. It has nothing to do with me. It was not my decision to hire the man. It was yours, and the decision is being called into question, not by just me, but by all of these folks over here who are the news media who represent our public. This isn't about Steve Stanger, the county executive. This is about Mark Tucker, the auditor, and the decision that led to him becoming the auditor. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Um, report of special committees. Now special committee reports will proceed with public forum. We have nine speakers this evening, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, tonight we have nine speakers. When your name is called, please come forward and state your name and address for the record. And uh, please keep your comments to three minutes. First speaker. First speaker this evening is Lynn LeBeau. Hi. My name is Lynn LeBeau. I live in unincorporated St. Louis County. I told you months ago I was in it for the long haul, as it's related to cleaning up St. Louis County, which is why I'm here tonight. I have heard reports of Steve Stanger attacking a, the new county auditor. Mr. Stanger reports that the auditor comes in late, but doesn't mention he is likely out in the field at county departments. Mr. Stanger reports that there have been no audits performed in the six months of his term, yet fails to mention the auditor's department is not fully staffed. Lastly, Mr. Stanger is attacking Mr. Tucker concerning his IRS lien. Mr. Tucker has, compl has complied with the IRS to their satisfaction, and the insinuation of something sinister appears to be your political game. It's ironic, Steve, that you are pointing your finger at Mr. Tucker and taking advantage of a hardship he experienced. I have with me today a document from the Circuit Court of the City of St. Louis that, that I would like to give to the clerk. Of February of 2005. It is a lawsuit that was
was brought by Associated Bank against multiple defendants, including Stephen V. Stang. It appears you were sued, Steve, for failing to honor your financial obligations. You guaranteed as part of Stakeout Incorporated for more than half a million dollars, February of 2005. So, Mr. Stinger, if you're going to continue to be on the airwaves and call for the firing of Mark Tucker, the people should follow your example and call for your rights of nation. After all, not honoring a half million dollars of your obligation along with your numerous pay-to-play politics that continue to plague your office. Your actions, your behavior, appear to be in conflict with your job description as leader of St. Louis County. I would ask you, Steve, to resign as the county executive so we can truly begin to drain the swamp of St. Louis County. Thank you. Next speaker. Next speaker is Mitch Leachman.
Bob Manice, 3920 Russell Boulevard in the city. I'm here uh, to speak on behalf of the Creevecore Park Coalition, and I thank you for the opportunity to speak. Uh, the letters that Mitch Leachman just presented to you demonstrate that this project uh, at Creevecore Lake Memorial Park is in violation of federal law. What better justification to walk away from this boondongle than a blatant violation of federal law that has been in part due to questionable conduct by the county executive. Well, guess what? The contracts that some of you might be worried about breaching specifically provided for this possibility that if the Legacy Ice Foundation failed to comply with federal law or failed to get proper approvals of the federal government in advancing this project, the county would not be obligated to go forward with said contracts. Right now, there is a license and right of entry contract between the Legacy Ice Foundation, the county, um, and there are two provisions in that contract that would allow the county to get out of that agreement at this time. There's also an unenforceable memorandum of understanding between the county, the Industrial Development Authority, and the Legacy Ice Foundation. Um, again, unenforceable. This document also requires compliance with federal law. The other thing that it requires is that uh, by August 31st, the Legacy Ice Foundation was to have gotten certain conditions met uh, before August 31st, 2017. One of those uh, conditions being approval of the National Park Service to proceed with this project. Um, that condition has not been met. Uh, the the requirements under the Land and Water Conservation Fund Act require significant upfront disclosures by project applicants to start the dialogue between the National Park Service to deal with what happens when there's a conversion. None of these correspondences happened, and now we're at a point where these contingency dates have been passed, and there's been no correspondence or communication about how a uh, substitute property will be purchased, whether it's available, and therefore it's completely unrealistic to assume that this project could be completed by next September, given the remaining federal approvals and requirements that will have to take place before the National Park Service gives approval for this project. What we're asking for is for the county council to take back, to take back the authority that it <coughs> issued to the executive uh, in ordinance 26621, given what's happened, and to uh, honor the agreements as they were entered, but to also use the county's authorities under those contracts to walk away from this project. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next speaker is Gwen Wallman. Good evening. As we all know, the County Parks Master Plan Survey showed only 6% respondents chose ICE facility as one of their top four interests. The survey took place after Council had approved the Legacy Plan, and County residents never were asked about the Legacy Plan in the Master Plan process. A Council hearing or two does not replace a statistical survey. So I look to the project needs section of the St. Louis Ice Center Environmental Assessment for material supporting Council's decision. The document accepts Legacy's claim of 7,000 youth hockey participants in the St. Louis area. But USA Hockey, the governing body for organized amateur ice hockey in the United States, puts current registration numbers at 7,084 players for the entire state of Missouri. <clears throat> the document states Legacy's goals of, goal of 12,000 players in the St. Louis area by 2020. Never mind that a special interest goals do not prove public needs. Legacy claims that to reach their goal, our area would have to have 28 indoor ice facilities with 36 to 40 ice sheets. The document uses Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania as a comparison with 14,600 youth hockey players and 44 ice sheets. 
However, USA Hockey reports 14,600 as the number of players in the entire western half of Pennsylvania, not just Pittsburgh. And online, I could only find 10 or 11 indoor ice facilities in the Pittsburgh area with a total of 18 to 19 ice sheets. That's a far cry from the claim of 44 sheets. Moreover, a 2016 Pittsburgh Post-Gazette article with the headline, Market for Ice Rinks in Pittsburgh May Be Thinning, describes Pittsburgh ice facilities failing due to an oversaturated market. Why have we been set up to duplicate this failing market here? Altogether, the foundation of project needs crumbles under scrutiny. Legacy goals should never have supplanted due diligence by those entrusted with the public's land. Not everything the public wishes for is feasible or advisable. But it is shocking that the county voted to give up nearly $40 million in taxpayer money, along with federally protected open space, without public input or legitimate proof of need. Please support Chairman Page's bill to halt this misguided project, rectify losses as possible, and restore county government credibility with the public. Thank you. Thanks. Next speaker is Charles Bell. Good evening. I'm Charles Bell. I'm an architect in Clayton, live in Webster Groves, member of the Creve Coeur Park Coalition. Yes, the developer Legacy Ice has given you incorrect, misleading, and incomplete information, and now the developer has also changed the information. And the development schedule has changed. The developer claims completion by fall 2018, but this is impossible. A realistic estimated timeline is closer to this. The Department of Natural Resources may review and submit the final environmental assessment to the National Park Service in September. This isn't likely. Errors and omissions in the EA by the applicant will require corrections and revisions. The earliest is at least October. The understaffed National Park Service cannot review this until spring 2018. And because of this project's unusual issues, this will likely be handled by both the Omaha and Washington, D.C. offices. Project revisions could take months. If National Park Service requires conversion, this project could take years and add tens of millions to the project. But let's say there is an anomaly in the review process. The most aggressive schedule could put conditional approval into summer of 2018. <clears throat> Revised completion date could be the fall of 2019, one year late. This is only a hopeful possibility. Remember, this is the most aggressive schedule in an unlikely change of events. You didn't agree to this. By this time, several other proposed ice rinks cur currently under development would be operational. The development cost has increased. The current operational plan is now $65.9 million, with a greater burden on St. Louis County. Additionally, the construction delay alone would increase the total cost several million dollars. This is more than you agreed to. <coughs> this is now a larger developer uh, development. The developer stated a total project size of 253,813 square feet, but the revised total size is 315.50 square feet. You didn't agree to this either. But not everything has gotten bigger. The necessary provided parking and actual outdoor recreation has been reduced. The developer originally showed 1166 on-site parking spaces, plus borrowed available spaces from Sailboat Cove, a total of 1434 parking spaces. But the new plans show only 880 on-site parking. 257 future west parking spaces and the, real, and the only real outdoor recreation area was excluded and these were both labeled as future. Who pays for this That's in the future? future? Together with Sailboat Cove parking totals 1137. This is a deficit of 200, 
97 to steal from the rest of the park while increasing traffic congestion. Nobody agreed to any of this. We need you to wrap up. Thank you. Thanks. Next speaker, Steve Brewer. Good evening. Uh, thank you, council members, chairman, county executive, for the pleasure and the opportunity to speak to you tonight. I am here this evening not in support of any group, not to speak about the, uh, about the project per se. I am here because of my 30 years experience in park management and park administration. Twelve and a half years of that was with St. Louis County Parks itself. I'm here also because I have administered the Shaw Park Ice Rink for 10 years when I was park, uh, superintendent of parks for the city of Clayton. I now sit on a, uh, as a member of a park commission in the city that I reside in, and that city does have an indoor rink. I'm here basically to show that there is a real possibility of ice, ice saturation in St. Louis County. The rinks we have, ISO Legacy talks about this as being a regional com complex. So be it. The list of rinks in this region, City of Kirkwood, City of Creve Coeur, Greensfelder Rec Complex, Kennedy Rec Complex, City of Clayton Shaw Park, City of Brentwood, City of Webster Groves, City of St. Louis Stein Steinberg Rink, O'Fallon, Illinois, Granite, City, Illinois, Alton, Illinois, City of St. Peter's Recplex, Lindenwood Ice Arena in Wentzville, which is open to the public, FSI Shark Tank in Lee Ferry Road, St. Louis Mills Skate Park Plaza, and the Hardy's Complex in Chesterfield. That's a total of 18 rinks. <coughs> With Hardy's closing, there will be 15 rinks. List of rinks now <coughs> being planned or being developed. One slab in Fitton, two in Afton, two in Chesterfield, which would have been three, except the Blues backed Legacy rather than uh, the Hardy's, uh, the Chesterfield thing. Pacific, one slab. Edwardsville, one slab. That's 22 rinks will be operational by 2019. If Legacy goes through with this, you will have 26 operational rinks. And yes, I do know how to operate a Zamboni. If more ice is needed, then caddy parks need to, ex need to adapt their existing <coughs> two rinks from temporary and from seasonal use to year-round use. If more ice is, is needed, <coughs> county parks should reopen North County Rec Complex, which had a full slab of ice. Now, can anyone in the council or county parks? Uh, Gary's not here. Can someone tell me why North County Rec was closed down? We had an operational slab of ice. Please, God, do not tell me it was because of demographics. We're going to have to wrap up. Okay. Uh, with, with that, if that was open, you would have 27 slabs in St. Louis. Rents traditionally are very expensive. Uh, none are historically financially sustainable. All county and city rinks require large amounts of funds to maintain and repair them. Few, if any, private rinks have stead, uh, made the test of time and lasted more than 10 or 12 years. <coughs> rinks traditionally every 20 or 25 years require a new slab, a new refrigeration system. That's over a million and a half dollars in today's terms. I will close up by saying if Ice Legacy and the Blues wanted to promote youth sports and a positive character building activity, then the true need for the ice rinks would exist not in the county, but in the inner city where the youth have only one rink for the whole population. Even the NHL has recognized the need for diversity in the inner city. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Tom Sullivan. <clears throat> Mr. 
Mr. Chairman, I have a few things to mention. I support Bill 226, which provides for the appointment of a legislative research director. This is long overdue as the council flies blind so on so many issues. Bill number 219 for the Emergency Communications Commission is up for final passage. This takes the consulting contract to a new not to exceed amount of $3,045,000 from $2,925,000. I question this bill at the committee meeting as I think this commission spends a lot of money with little scrutiny. In 2011, when Steve Stinger was council chair, a contract for over $80 million was approved for the commission and there was only one bidder. The commission was to provide a big upgrade to emergency communications. As I mentioned at the committee hearing, Elliot Davis once did a story of a, middle, of a woman back in the Ferguson protest whose store was being looted in the middle of the night. She was calling 911 on her cell phone but not getting any answers. There's also been problems with emergency stormwater sirens. I think more needs to be known about this contract. Few details have been provided. Sub bill number one for bill number 223 appropriating $63,916,000 to buy state for public transit. There has probably not been an area where the county council has failed to provide oversight than with Metro. Of the amount listed, 4.1 million is for security. But what's to be gotten for the 4 million? I think much more needs to be known before approving this appropriation. Supposedly, there was supposed to be some kind of investigation of the police coverage on Metrolink or the lack of coverage, whatever happened with that. It's interesting the county executive Stinger is calling on the council to remove the county auditor claiming it is such a critical position. It should be a critical position, but it hasn't been for the last 30 years. This is because no one has wanted the auditor to do much of anything. Can anyone think of an audit done by previous county auditors that was of any substance or made the news? I can't. Mr. Stinger was on the council for six years and was a council chair once. I can't remember a single time when he asked for a particular audit to be done. The Channel 4 report said the county auditor helped you uncover the millions of dollars embezzled in the county health department. That is absolutely not true. Reporters should know not to trust information provided by the county executive's office. And let's not forget the top to bottom forensic audit of county government that was promised by Steve Stinger when running for county executive. It turned out to be a bunch of nothing. It wasn't a top to bottom audit, it wasn't a forensic audit, and it took nearly two years and cost over $200,000. Mr. Stinger's newfound concern about the county, county auditor is about eight years too late and cannot be taken seriously. It seems more designed to divert attention from his role in the destruction of 40 acres of parkland in Creve Park Park. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Next speaker is Kathleen Henry. My name is Kathleen Henry and I'm an attorney at Great Rivers Environmental Law Center. We've been asked to look into the legality of the hockey complex on behalf of county residents who are park users. I'm going to discuss campaign contributions accepted by Steve Stanger this election cycle. He has accepted approximately $150,000 from individuals and corporations who are directly benefiting from the hockey complex project. Some individuals and corporations that directly benefit are adjacent property owners. At last week's council meeting, George Stock, the engineer who designed the grading work, said the grading work had reduced the 100-year flood levels on multiple properties adjacent to the site. When you take a property out of the floodplain, you make it more valuable for development. One adjacent property that probably benefited is a 22-acre parcel owned by BD Expressway, LLC. This property is just north of the hockey arena site, separated by railroad tracks. The drainage plan will pull water away from the property and drain it west westward into Creefcore Creek. The registered agent for BD Expressway is Dan Devereaux. Dan Devereaux and his company, the Devereaux Company, have given Steve Stanger's campaign committee almost $40,000 in the past election cycle. On April 25th of this year, there were nu numerous contributions from other landowners in the Howard Ben Bottoms whose property values would be increased by this development. These came in small amounts, totaling $2,250. <coughs> 
Also on April 25th, two representatives of the Howard Bend Levy District gave 5,500 to Mr. Stanger's campaign. The Levy District is both the entity in charge of the flood control in the bottoms and a major landowner there. And a vice president with Arco Construction, the firm that will build the hockey arena, <coughs> gave $1,500 to Mr. Stanger on April 22nd. In a recently ex executed memorandum of understanding between the county, Legacy ICE, and the Industrial Development Authority, it was shown that many local law firms are already benefiting from the project. A large law firm which is serving as bond counsel has given the Stanger campaign $35,000. Another law firm representing the IDA has given $30,500. The law firm representing the Legacy Ice Foundation has given $25,000. And as I stated several weeks ago, the, ice, the Blues Ice Hockey gave $5,000 recently. It could be that all of these landowners, lawyers, and construction companies are really enamored, but I have to say this is starting to stink as badly as a kid's hockey jersey after a few weeks without washing. Thank you. Final speaker this evening is Michael Meredith. Good evening. My name is Michael Meredith. And I'm a resident of North, of non-incorporated St. Louis County, living uh, within about a mile or so of Cleve Court Park. I would first like to commend the council for voting to suspend the construction of the ice complex at Cleve Court Lake Memorial Park. At the risk of stating the obvious, however, the fact that the construction was begun prior to obtaining all of the necessary approvals in my opinion, disqualifies this project from any public assistance, whether it be county guaranteed bonds, subsidies, and most importantly, permission to use this parkland in the very first place. In his zeal to promote this project, County Executive Stenger has accurately pointed out that there are ice rinks in other county parks. Fine, build this complex in one of those. However, I somehow believe that the residents near Queenie Park, for example, would share Mr. Stenger's enthusiasm. With regard to the so-called stormwater work, that's simply misdirection, as this grading would have no effect on redirecting stormwater away from current facilities in, like the boathouse and the park. You do not grade wooded natural terrain to improve or control stormwater. Anyone that has spent more than five minutes watching rainwater cascade down a turf grass slope will clearly understand that. This only benefits commercial property outside of the park. Those of us in opposition to this project are in no way opposed to facilities for youth and professional sports. Despite the closing of a large ice rink complex in the Chesterfield Valley area, some of us still call it the Gumbo Flats, many believe that a complex of this sort will be profitable. I wish them well in that endeavor, but I urge the council to once and for all put a stop to this construction and help the developers find a suitable location that will not A, pave over public parkland, B, put the county in the position of being a landlord to a business that could very possibly fail, C, create a void of unoccupied buildings at the mills where the blues currently are practicing, and D, rob the county of green space in a natural floodplain. Thank you for the opportunity to voice my concerns. Thank you. No more speakers, Mr. Chair. That concludes the public, the public forum. Please proceed with introduction of bills. Bill number 228, introduced by Councilmember Harder, an ordinance amending ordinance number 26,753 by repealing and reenacting sections 1 and 2 pertaining to two grants from the Missouri Department of Transportation for support of two runway projects at Spirit of St. Louis Airport. Bill number 229, introduced by Councilmember Dolan, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to execute a contract with Christ Church, United Church of Christ, for lease of space at 2200 Bellevue Avenue for the Doors to Success Youth Program. Bill number 230, introduced by Councilmember Page, an ordinance appropriating and setting apart the sum of $400,000 from the unappropriated balance of the general fund for completion of the Intergovernmental Cooperation Agreement with Metropolitan St. Louis Sewer District for shared use of the Acela permitting system. Bill number 231, introduced by Councilmember Dolan, 
an ordinance appropriating up to $63,916,349.25 of the funds received from the state of Missouri from the half cent sales tax levy pursuant to ordinance number 24245 for the public mass transit trust fund for public transportation services and for county police services for metro from the amount received by st louis county from july 1st 2017 through june 30th 2018 appropriating from the transportation trust fund approximately 50 percent of the amount received by st louis county from the sales tax levy by ordinance number 6792 from July 1, 2017 through June 30, 2018, net of the TIF transfers out, and providing for the amounts and method of disbursements to the Bi-State Development Agency and use of funds for support of police services for the Bi-State Development Agency. Mr. Chair, that is all the bills. Perfection. Bill number 139, introduced by Council Member Irby. Was, oh, I'm sorry for Councilmember Page. I'm sorry. Uh, we will uh, drop this bill from the order of business, and we will revisit the um, pension changes when we understand the impact of uh, Proposition P and uh, the um, increased salaries that we are anticipating for our police officers and support staff, and the, we understand the impact on the pension. But I do believe we need to address this question. That would be the order. Bill number 162 introduced by council members Page and Harder. I move to hold bill number 162. 162 is held. Bill number 189 introduced by council member Page. Move to hold uh, 189 and bill number 189 is held. Bill number 190 introduced by council member Page. Uh, move to hold bill number 190. 190 is held. Bill number 222 introduced by council member Trakis. Please hold on the order of business. Bill number uh, 222 is held. Bill number 224 introduced by Council Member Page. Move to perfect bill number 224. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Bill number 224 is perfected. Bill number 225 introduced by Council Member Walton Gray. I uh, need to hold bill number 225 as we need to again make corrections. Um, as we get more information from the uh, Department of Transportation, we're going to try to renew this for a five-year annual uh, renewable loan, renewable lease, and uh, by approval by the County Council. So, would you like me to have a sub bill then for this? Yes. Very good. Bill number two twenty-five is held. Bill number 226, introduced by council members Walton, Gray, Page, and Irby. Yes, um, before I move to perfect bill number 226, I'd like to state that it's obvious from what we've seen these past few weeks that we need our own council. Uh, some requests have been made for legislation to be drafted, and there has been refusal to uh, draft this legislation. Also in the past, when the county executive in introduces legislation, and the council members may disagree. We are not able to get any support uh, for our position, nor are we um, given a lot of uh, information. So uh, with that, I would like to move for, for perfection of bill number 226. Second. Um, a motion to second for perfection of bill number 226. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. Uh, roll call. Councilmember Irby? Aye. Councilmember Page? Aye. Councilmember Wassinger? No. Councilmember Gray? Aye. Councilmember Dolan? No. Councilmember Trakis? Aye. Councilmember Harder? No. To turn the motion to perfect bill number 227, there are. 226. Four, I'm sorry. Oh, 226. I apologize. There are four ayes and, no, and three noes. The bill number 226 is perfected. Bill number 227, introduced by Council Member Harder. I move to perfect this bill, number 227. Second. <coughs> Are we going to have a hearing on this first? Yeah, we could do that first if you want. Well, I anticipate supporting this, and I want to commend you for bringing the issue forward. Um, but um, we may be making some changes, and I wouldn't want to be in the position of having to uh, but no on perfection on something that I really like if we needed to change it. 
What changes are you thinking? I don't know. I haven't. I just saw the bill today. But I'm assuming that it won't take much, and I appreciate what you're doing, and I anticipate supporting the bill. But um, I think it would be a good idea to have a hearing before we perfect. Okay, I'll hold the bill for a hearing. All right, we'll uh, try and get something this week. I know you said Thursday was a yes. good day for you. Uh, we just need to check on the availability of all the council members. Bill number 227 is held. Final passage. Bill number 183 introduced by Council Member Irby. Uh, please hold bill number 183. Bill number 183 is held. Bill number 212 introduced by Council Member Page. Um, move for final passage of bill number 212. Second. We'll call. Council Member Irby. Aye. Council Member Page. Aye. Council Member Wassinger. Aye. Council Member Gray. Aye. Council Member Dolan. Aye. Council Member Trachis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Mr. Chair, bill number 212, there are seven ayes. Bill number 212 is finally passed. Bill number 213, introduced by Council Member Page. Move to for, move for final passage of bill number 213. Second. Uh, roll call. Council Member Irby? Aye. Council Member Page? Aye. Council Member Wassinger? Aye. Council Member Gray? Aye. Council Member Dolan? Aye. Council Member Trachis? Aye. Council Member Harder? Aye. Mr. Chairman, bill number 213, there are seven ayes. Bill number 213 is finally passed. Bill number 214, introduced by Council Member Page. Move for a final passage of Bill number 214. Second. Roll call. Council Member Irby? Aye. Council Member Page? Aye. Council Member Wassinger? Aye. Council Member Gray? Aye. Council Member Dolan? Aye. Council Member Trachis? Aye. Council Member Harder? Aye. Mr. Chairman, Bill number 214, there are seven ayes. Bill number 214 is finally passed. Bill number 215, introduced by Council Member Page. Uh, move for final passage of Bill number 215. Second. Roll call. Council Member Irby? Aye. Council Member Page? Aye. Council Member Wassinger? Aye. Council Member Gray? Aye. Council Member Dolan? Aye. Council Member Trachis? Aye. Council Member Harder? Aye. Mr. Chair, on Bill number 215, there are seven ayes. Bill number 215 is finally passed. Bill number 216, introduced by Council Member Page. Move for final passage of Bill number 216. Second. Roll call. Council Member Irby? Aye. Council Member Page? Aye. Council Member Wassinger? Aye. Council Member Gray? Aye. Council Member Dolan? Aye. Council Member Trachis? Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Mr. Chairman, Bill number 216, there are seven ayes. Bill number 216 is finally passed. Bill number 217, introduced by Council Member Page. Move for final passage, Bill number 217. Second. Roll call. Council Member Irby? Aye. Council Member Page? Aye. Council Member Wassinger? Aye. Council Member Gray? Aye. Council Member Dolan? Aye. Council Member Trachis? Aye. Council Member Harder? Aye. Mr. Chairman, Bill number 217, Bill number 217, there are seven ayes. Bill number 217 is finally passed. Bill number 218 introduced by Council Member Page. Move for final passage of Bill number 218. Second. <coughs> Roll call. Council Member Irby? Aye. Council Member Page? Aye. Council Member Wassinger? Aye. Council Member Gray? Aye. Council Member Dolan? Aye. Council Member Trachis? Aye. Council Member Harder? Aye. Strand Bill number 218, there are seven ayes. Bill number 218 is finally passed. Bill number 219 introduced by Council Member Page. Move uh, for final passage of Bill number 219. Roll call. Oh, just give me a second. Second. Roll call. Council Member Irby? Aye. Council Member Page? Aye. Council Member Wassinger? Aye. Council Member Gray? Aye. Council Member Dolan? Aye. Council Member Trachis? No. Council Member Harder? Aye. Mr. Chair, Bill number 219, there are six ayes and one no. Bill number 219 is finally passed. Bill number 220, introduced by Council Member Page. We'll move for final passage of Bill number 220. Second. Roll call. Council Member Irby? Aye. Council Member Page? Aye. Council Member Wassinger? Aye. Council Member Gray? Aye. Council Member Dolan? Aye. Council Member Trachis? Aye. Council Member Harder? Aye. Mr. Chair, Bill number 220, there are seven ayes. Bill number 220 is finally passed. Bill number 221, introduced by Council Member Trachis. <coughs> Move for final passage of Bill 221, please. Second. Roll call. Council Member Irby? Aye. Council Member Page? Aye. Council Member Wassinger? Aye. Council Member Gray? Aye. Council Member Dolan? Aye. Council Member Trachis? Aye. Council Member Harder? Aye. Mr. Chair, Bill Number 221, there are seven ayes. Bill Number 221 is final passage. Substitute Bill Number 1 for Bill Number 223, introduced by Council Member Page. Mr. Uh, Chair, we have a substitute bill. Um, I have a substitute uh, before you that uh, removes all the language uh, pertaining to contracting. Um, with the police department and Metro. I have received feedback uh, from both Metro and the police department that uh, they're close to a contract. 
and I am optimistic about an improved uh, working relationship with uh, security on Metro. So what this uh, uh, substitute bill does is um, increase the appropriation uh, to uh, $68 million, an additional $5 million taken from Proposition A funds, which will um, uh, give uh, Metro the original amount that they requested. And I'm offering this substitute because I uh, would like to not see Metro services cut. And with that, I, I move for, um, well, first of all, I guess you can read it. I'm going to read it before yes, I make sir. my motion. Substitute bill number two for bill number 223 introduced by Council Member Page and ordinance appropriate, appropriating up to $68,916,349.25 of the funds received from the state of Missouri from the half cent sales tax levy pursuant to ordinance number 24,245 for the public mass transit trust fund for public transportation services and for county police services for Metro from the amount received by St. Louis County from July 1, 2017 through June 20. June 30th, 2018, appropriating from the Transportation Trust Fund approximately 50% of the amount received by St. Louis County from the sales tax levied by Ordinance Number 6,792 from July 1, 2017 through June 30, 2018, netted the TIF transfers out and providing for the amounts and method of disbursements to the Bi-State Development Agency and use of funds for support of police services for the Bi-State Development Agency. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, there's no less than four bills or substitutes or combinations thereof on this subject out there right now. Is there a possibility of having a committee that we can somehow push this all into one bill to make it very clear? Well, we could, but I believe we're under time constraints to appropriate the money to Metro. We, you know, we received their budget late in the process, and it took us a while to get our hands around what's happening. And I don't want them to miss their bond payment. And I understand that we have a timing issue if we don't finally approve this. Uh, by next week, then we will uh, uh, we will risk not appropriating the funds to Metro, and then they will miss their bond payment. So, unfortunately, I believe we're under some time pressure to make a decision on well, this. I think I mean, uh, Councilman Dolan's got a <coughs> bill very similar to this, and I don't know the difference between his bill and your bill. Great question, and I'll explain that. The difference is uh, Councilman Dolan's bill um, appropriates the amount of money that the county executive requested for Metro which was a little more than $5 million less than Metro requested. Um, we heard testimony from Metro in committee that they will um, spend the money that they're given, but if the request is cut by $5 million, then they would have to cut services, and primarily the services that would be cut would be bus services. My concern is that there are a lot of folks with disabilities that depend on those bus services to get back and forth to work, and I would not like for them to lose access to transportation. What's the difference between Councilman Dolan's bill? $5 million. The difference right. between the Metro request and the request uh, approved in, by committee or by commission here and recommended by the county executive. Uh, can I make a comment? Yes. Um, I agree with Councilman Harder. We just received this and not knowing these extra figures, and I haven't heard from Metro saying that they're five million short and cutting services. First, I've heard of that, um, so I would think we would at least have a conversation besides right here uh, about this appropriation. I agree 100 percent. That's why I brought forth the other bill so that we would have Metro paid on time and that the county police would have their money on time so they don't have to stop any services either. Um, I think we all have the same intention. It's just a matter of numbers and not knowing anything about cutting services. First, I've heard of that. I, I would appreciate if we would have some dialogue about this. That was discussed in committee, but I, I appreciate your comments and questions. I think they're appropriate. Um, Mr. Crane, can you explain the timeline that we're under? Uh, as far as uh, approving an appropriation for Metro? Well, uh, I must confess, Mr. Chairman, I'm not aware of any particular crisis date for the uh, approval for the Metro. And so there has been historically, we are, you know, there have been uh, approvals later in the year and later more into their fiscal year than we are now. And there's no, no pressure on a bond payment? I'm not aware of any, uh, but it may be that I just, I don't know. I wasn't... Uh, 
prepared to ask answer any questions about the bond payments. Okay. I can tell you though that uh, either bill can be uh, Mr. Dolan's bill or your sub bill can be uh, perfected and finally passed next week if that's a concern or it can go additional time. Well, I, I don't think all seven council members will be here next week, so I don't think we'll be able to suspend the rules for by unanimous consent and do both of those at the same time. It's a valid but, point. Um, if there is no time constraints, I would be happy with the vote on um, whether or not we'll give Metro the appropriation they requested and then hold um, final passage until uh, we can get some more information. If um, if, if there is a time constraint and we don't approve this next week, then I think we'll see some uh, emergency maneuvering by the county council to get them their money on time because I don't want to see them miss a bond payment. It affects them and it affects us. I understand, sir. Mr. Chair, yeah. if I may. Just a second. Uh, hey. Councilwoman Walton Gray and then Councilman Trakes. <coughs> Councilman Trakes. I note that there are representatives from Bi State in the room tonight. Why don't we just cut to the chase? And ask them to explain if there is a time constraint and if so what it is do we have someone from by state here good evening mr chairman of the council my name is john nations i'm the president and chief executive officer of by state development we have written mr transit the deadline that we're talking about is that uh, all of our long-term debt is related to the Cross County project, which is supposed to be in systems across county. Bond payment to on those bonds October 1st. I'm going to break it. So we have to have our appropriations approved and we have to make that bond payment no later than October the 1st. That's the time frame. Kathy, did I miss anything? She watches it for us every day, so I always want to ask her. Right. Well, as long as we have the approval by then, we're fine, right? Okay. But that's the time frame that we have. If that bond payment, if the appropriation of the bond documents are obligated to do several things, one is make the bond payment, the other is operate the track. If the appropriation is not made, we would have to notify the bondholders that there's not an appropriation approved to operate the transit system. There isn't one now. And what we've always been advised is that, that will negatively impact not only the credit rating of the by state development agency, but the credit rating of the same as well. Okay. Can you, oh, thank you. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Nations? We have a hearing on Thursday then? If this is, needs to be rushed through. Well, I have to see. Hold that thought. Councilman Walton Gray. Um, the only change in this bill is that bill that Council, Councilman Dolan uh, drafted. The only change is that increase. So if my position is either you agree with the increase or you don't. I don't see why we need to have a committee meeting before we vote on the subject. I, I concur. That's the okay. only change. Okay. Hello. Yeah, no, I mean, we don't. Hold on. Uh, Hold on. I'm sorry. Okay, so let's take turns. Councilwoman Wassinger, and then we'll come back. Okay. Um, Mr. Nations, so the, the pending request before us is to increase the county executive's recommendation by $5 million. Can you speak to exactly how those monies are going to be spent, and does it include the cost to cover the police the the security system? $152,000 as far as, our, as far as our appropriation. That does not include the we understood that the county will pay the county police department directly, maybe out of transit funds, maybe not. I'm not sure how that works. But uh, our request is for us to maintain and operate the transit system at current levels, which is what we've always been directed to maintain. <coughs> and so we put the service together with the county, as you know, St. Clair. You're talking about, given the time of year, we haven't had an appropriation since the 1st of July, so we're about nine months looking at a service adjustment probably in December, but uh, it would really affect service. Okay, thank you. Um, Councilman Hart. Um, <coughs> I think another issue here, and I don't know if that's been resolved, is the issue about whether the county 
executive makes a recommendation, and if we've bumped it by five five million, is that still legal? Not legal? Per our charter, has that been resolved? Um, by my reading of the charter, as long as we identify the funds that it's coming from, it's uh, allowed under our budget rules. And is that coming charter. from a different fund than it's was coming originally? from this, from Proposition A funds, the same fund as it. Um, I want to hear from our county lawyer on this because I think he has a different opinion. The opinion and I think that, charter I, speaks differently that well. I delivered to the council, I think it was on 822, has not changed. And the um, sub bill number two for bill 223 doesn't meet the infirmities identified in that opinion. Could you, could Chair, Mr. Chairman, I think what he's referring to, and I think there's a little bit of confusion on this issue, you're referring to the budget process, and the budget process is different from the process that we're in right now. This is a special appropriation, and a special appropriation is a separate matter. And I'm just speaking to clarify, not to argue. But the special appropriation issue is a different issue than the budget issue. And an appropriation in excess of the recommendation that I've made is actually not permitted by our charter in the special. And I think Peter could probably speak to that. I think these kinds of appropriations are, gar are governed by Section 8.050, which mentions a recommendation by the county executive under those circumstances that council may, by ordinance, okay. agree to it. Well, uh, we um, have differing opinions on whether or not this is a regular appropriation or a special appropriation, and I think that's what this whole argument keys on. And, um, you know, I appreciate everyone's input on that. Councilwoman Wassinger, did you have another question? Yes. Uh, so the five million dollars that we are, I guess, um, discussing. If if you do not receive that five million dollars, do you have a plan in place as to what would happen to the system? Would it be bus service? Well, I mean, what I would, would anticipate you anticipate? Would be concentrate on the bus service mainly because Metrolink is a region wide asset. It's given headways and given service. There's given hours that to our budget you're actually on July the first I understand that. all the jurisdictions. Frankly we didn't know that there might be a five million dollar reduction until July twenty fourth, which is after the year began. I understand that. Um would this council entertain appropriating the uh whatever the number fifty sixty three less five million or sixty three and then having a hearing on the additional $5 million request by Mr. Nation so he can provide us additional data that would not put Metro in danger of, of not meeting their bond payment, which I know is critical, in addition to providing service and, and uh, for the ridership. Well, I think the question before us is whether or not we want to give Metro the money that they need to avoid cuts or not. And um, I think that's one we have to decide. If we choose not, then we have to come back and try and get it through a special appropriation later, which, you know, may or may not happen. Yes, Councilman Hart. So my question on that one, I think it it, uh, it piggybacks on what Con uh, Councilman Colleen Lossinger said, is can we approve this and then go after a, a different bill with $5 million from a different fund to make up the difference? So two pieces of legislation to cover the, the total number. Well, Are then we, you're talking about a special appropriation and not a regular appropriation, in my mind and in the mind of many people I speak with. And that actually that would have to initiate with the county executive. That's not something we could initiate on our own. Well, I think what That's you could do, what, what would be possible, is to have a hearing. I mean, you could have a hearing. I'm sure you're prepared to present at a hearing. You could have a hearing this week on that additional five million dollars and if it's something that you know we're in agreement with we could discuss how to handle it and if we're in disagreement with it we could i mean we're talking five million dollars it's a substantial sum of taxpayer money i don't think a hearing would hurt anyone i think it would probably we've been talking about hearings for weeks now i think a hearing on that amount of money would be completely appropriate but of course i'm not you know, that's your decision but i, I think so, that it would be appropriate and uh, thank you councilman Dillon. Good. Just clarification, if just to keep things moving, if both of these were perfected tonight, then we're still 
one step away from something happening, correct? Yes. Neither so so if we, I mean, this one, is, well, the, the one actually, the one I introduced isn't perfected tonight because it's not on there. That would be next week. So there are some maneuvers we can make to get your bill perfected. I actually think that's a pretty good idea to keep both pieces of legislation moving. Because well, that I, way you have an option. At least you're, it, there's a guarantee that something, you're going to get money and the police are going to be there and the trains are going to run. Yeah, I, I mean, I, that's what we're ultimately trying to do, isn't it? I, I do think that, uh, that at least I'm, for one, uh, don't want to vote to cut Metro services. And that's what the, that's the decision that was placed before us. So um, I think uh, adopting my substitute and also... Uh, introducing your bill and uh, I believe we have the ability under our rules with unanimous consent to perfect it tonight yes. and then you'll have both vehicles moving while we discuss this and try and meet um, on time decision and bond payments I've, at least we're not slowing anything down we still have movement yeah I, I do think that we need to recognize that this the reason why we don't like to receive Budget issues late is because they, they have downstream consequences, and we're trying to navigate that now. And I, I think that this keeps the issue alive. Um, did you have something to add, Councilman Bussinger? Well, I was going to ask the county executive a question, but he, he just left. <laughs> Councilman Arden, did you have something to add? <laughs> no, other than I think that's probably a good um, compromise to uh, keep both bills at the same level of perfection, and then we can have a hearing, and then pick one or the other but we're not on perfection we're on final, final passage precisely. well we're going to have to do some maneuvers here in a minute to get to his bill and i think we can do that count councilman Drakes. less than three weeks ago we had a comprehensive hearing with by state on its budget i failed to see what additional information that wasn't garnered at that hearing is going to be produced tomorrow or any other day this discussion is nothing less than legislative pettifogger my state needs the money to continue services. We have an obligation to the residents of this county to make sure those services are in place. So I'm opposed to any creative maneuvering to delay consideration and passage of this bill. I agree. So um, I think we've had open discussion and <clears throat> we will... Um, move on with um, the rest of our agenda and Councilman Dolan if you want to return to your issue at the end of the meeting we'll, we'll talk about it thank you um, Mr. Nation. so yeah. I, I move uh, for adoption of substitute bill number two for bill number 223 second um, all in favor aye, aye. opposed no aye. I had one no I don't want to look at the video roll call yeah do a roll call I guess roll call Jen? Mm -hmm. Councilmember Irby? Aye. Councilmember Page? Aye. Councilmember Wassinger? You know, this I, I feel that this whole process of the Metro appropriation, we have seen four, five, six bills come come across our desk. And um, there is an addition there is a request for an additional five million dollars. And Metro says that they need it for funding. I am not in favor of defunding Metro, but I am in favor of knowing where that money is going to be spent. And um, if, if they don't get it, similarly, what is going to be cut? Because it could affect people in my district. So um, I just want to clarify, if we adopt the sub tonight, are you going to move to finally pass it? Not tonight. As well? No, I don't think we... we I think the timeline is... Uh, that we can adopt it next week. We can final pass it next week if we choose this vehicle. And we'll, we'll, uh, and keep Councilman Dolan's bill. We'll be moving along the process as well, I suppose. Right. Okay. Well, I will uh, tentatively agree to adopt your substitute. Um, and I, I would continue the dialogue with Mr. Nations on uh, in the ensuing week. Thank you. <laughs> Record that as an aye. Yes. Councilman. Thank you. Councilmember Gray? Aye. Councilmember Dolan? No. Councilmember Trakis? Aye. Councilmember Harder? I will vote in favor of this in 
only if we can keep Councilman Dolan's uh, bill moving forward. And if I can get a guarantee on that, I will vote aye. I don't know that I can guarantee that. I will let Dr. I will let Councilman Dolan make his motion to move this through the process. I can't guarantee the votes. That's up to everyone on this dais. So I, I don't know how I can do that. I understand what you're saying. It's not something I can promise you. Well, I hope in, uh, that everybody knows that I will vote aye if Mr. Dolan's bill has moved forward. You can't do that. Can you do that? No, uh, you have to. So, <laughs> Councilman Harder, I understand your point. I think uh, you can choose yes or no. Um, we appreciate where you're coming from and, and respect your opinion, but you have to choose yes or no. It can't be conditional on a future action. Well, it sounds like we're not going to because it looks like we got nodding of heads that they're not going to move Pat's bill, so I guess I'll have to abstain. Okay, that's fair. I appreciate your um, sincerity and being forthright. I think uh, dialogue is, is productive and helps us get to where we need to be. Um, Mr. Chair, on the motion to adapt substitute bill number two for bill number 223, there are five ayes, one no, and one abstention. Motion carries substitute bill number two for bill number 223 is uh, adopted. Um, this bill will um, hold on the order of business. Resolutions. We have one resolution this evening, Mr. Chair. Resolution number one, introduced by Council Member Wassinger. I move to adopt resolution one. Second. Second. Roll call. Can you read the resolution, please? Yes, sir. Thank you. It's about a boy scout. Resolution number one, introduced by Council Member, Ross, Council Member Wassinger, resolution, whereas Ray Cryenkamp has served the St. Clement of Rome Parish Boy Scout Troop 624 for many years, including but not limited to 10 years as Assistant Scoutmaster and 7 as Scoutmaster, and whereas under Ray's leadership, 34 Scouts have achieved the rank of Eagle Scout, and whereas Ray is the father of two girls and four boys, and all four of his sons have achieved the rank of Eagle Scout, and whereas in 2010, Ray was presented with the Silver Beaver Award, the highest recognition a Boy Scout Council can bestow on an adult volunteer leader, and which is presented to those volunteers who have provided noteworthy service that impacts the lives of youth and who have made outstanding contributions to the scouting program. And whereas, whereas it is appropriate to pause to express appreciation when a member of our community has selflessly given so much time and effort to improve the lives of young people. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the County Council of St. Louis County, Missouri, as follows Section 1. The County Council congratulates Ray, his family, and his fellow Scout leaders on his many years of service to the Young Men of Boy Scout Troop 624. Thank you, Jen. He's a phenomenal leader and a real, like, really does a lot of good work in our community. And so... Thank you. That's why we're recognizing him. Is there a second on second. the motion? Second. Roll call. Councilmember Irby? That needed to be read. Aye. <laughs> Councilmember uh, Page? Councilmember uh, Wassinger? Aye. Councilmember Gray? Aye. Councilmember Dolan? Aye. Councilmember Trachis? Aye. Councilmember Harder? Aye. Mr. Chair, resolution number one, there are seven ayes. Uh, resolution number one is adopted. Moving on to unfinished business, Mr. Chair, item number one. Um, hold on the order of business uh, and uh, stay motion through item number four. Um, and that will be the order. Item number five, seventh district. Uh, hold on the order of business. So ordered. Item number six, first district. Hold on the order of business. So ordered. Item number seven. <clears throat> hold on the order of business and that will be the order. And moving on to new business, Mr. Chair, we have one prepared order this evening. I move for adoption of order number one. Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, order number one is adopted. Mr. Chair, how do we move past bill? Um, that's up to Councilman Dolan if he wants to um, try and process that bill. Um, well, Adoption, does it, what's the, what's the process, Mr. I, I would suggest, Mr. Chair, that um, there will be a motion to suspend the rules to return to the introduction of Bill's order of business, um, and then you would vote on that motion, after that? and then um, make a motion to advance Bill number 231 to the perfection order of business. And does that... 
And then if we, if that motion is successful, um, does that require a majority vote or a... Uh, the motion to suspend the rules was The majority vote unanimous. and the advance to perfection at the same yeah. night, is that a unanimous consent? Perfection, perfection is required unan unanimity, but not a motion to suspend the rules. Okay. So Just in a mere majority. Okay. So in order to make sure we understand... In order to move your bill to perfection, a uh, unanimous consent would be tonight. required right. tonight. Required for perfection. Where is it going from there? <laughs> so I, I, I move. To, can we do that now, or are we? I mean, I just uh, to go through the exercise here. I don't know that this has much future, but I move to suspend rules to move Bill Two Thirty One to perfection. Second. Okay, so um, I will. Uh, well, we have to vote this on right. that, right? So it's a uni uh, unanimous vote once the rules have been suspended and a motion to perfect the bill has been made. To perfect the bill under those circumstances, all seven members must approve. Okay. So the motion before you is to suspend the rules to allow Councilman Dolan's um, bill to be corrected, uh, to be um, moved to the order of perfection. Um, and it's been seconded. I will, um, uh, recognizing uh, how everyone has worked together tonight, I will definitely be voting to allow this bill to move forward so you can have your vote. I don't believe you have unanimous consent to move it forward, but we'll see how it goes. So um, uh, all in favor of the motion to suspend the rules to move Councilman Dolan's bill uh, number 220, what is the number? 31. 231. To the perfection order of business, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion carries. Uh, rules are suspended uh, in order to move this to, to consider moving this to uh, perfection. So I move to perfect Bill 231. <clears throat> Second. Okay, we'll uh, uh, call the roll. Uh, now this requires unanimous consent. Yes. Uh, so I guess we don't need to call the roll. All in favor of the motion, say um, aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. Okay. Uh, motion does not carry. Um, we're now at the end of our council meeting, and we will entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. We're adjourned. Thank you. Thanks for your patience. Aye.